The DNA transforming principle starts with a scientist named Griffith, who performed an experiment to determine whether an extract from dead bacterial cells could genetically transform to living cells. He started off with two types of strains from Streptococcus pneumonia, one strain being the virulent smooth strain and one being the rough avirulent strain. He injected each strain into a mouse. The virulent smooth strain mouse died and the rough avirulent mouse did not die. When he heated the smooth virulent strain up and injected it into the mouse, the mouse did also not die. However, when he mixed the heat killed smooth strain with the avirulent rough strain, the mouse died. This led him to believe that you can extract dead bacterial cells and genetically transform them to living cells. But he didn't know what in the bacteria had caused this to happen. A new question arose. What is the chemical nature of the transforming substance? Avery, MacLeod, and McCarty, intrigued by Griffith's experiment, decided to take on an experiment of their own. They decided to take the smooth, virulent, heated bacteria, homogenize it, and divide it into three samples. They wanted to use these samples to determine exactly what was causing the virulent strain to transfer. In the first sample, they used RNase, an enzyme that breaks down RNA. In the second sample, they used protease, an enzyme that breaks down proteins. And in the last sample, they used DNase, an enzyme that breaks down DNA. Each of these three samples were then mixed again with the avirulent R strain of bacteria. They then injected each one into a mouse to determine whether it would be infected or not. The mouse with the RNase and protease did not survive, meaning that the bacteria had still transformed even when the RNA and proteins were no longer present. However, in the sample with the DNA, the mouse lived. Because the DNA had been killed and the DAG bacteria's DNA couldn't transfer over. Concluding that DNA is what causes the transformations to occur.